Hi, I'm Jay Souter. To create a stronger U.S. economy, my team and I are piling into an RV, turning around the financial future of America, one entrepreneur at a time. During our 68-day speaking tour, we will be visiting 14 cities, teaching sales, marketing, and mindset. I believe empowering entrepreneurs create stronger businesses. Strong businesses create thriving communities. Thriving communities create stronger states, and stronger states create a strong America. I'm passionate about this because I believe your God given mission can either be fulfilled or funded through your business. In short, when small business wins, America wins. My team starts with my friend AJ and expands to 18 business owners who are our hosts nationwide. Farlin coordinates it and her team of web designers and support staff helps as well. And the two videographers, HB and Tasha, chronicle our journey. Our PR team creates social media, radio, and TV opportunities. Stepping up and playing a bigger game allowed me to make a lot of money, but more importantly, that allowed me to help a lot of people and make a big difference in the world. All right, so we started that tour on 9-11 and we started it on 9-11 on purpose and the idea was let's bring back America one entrepreneur at a time. And I got a call on September 10th and I've been training and speaking for a long time. I'll tell you my story in a minute. Um, so I got a call from Olga and Olga was a client for years in this other, I used to do like personal development training, and Olga wanted to be a speaker, and she never made the leap. She never stepped into speaking, and she was from Russia, she's this great Russian accent, and she calls me and she says, Jace, I'm having open heart surgery, at least that's how I think her voice sounds. She goes, I'm having open heart surgery tomorrow, and I just want to call you and say hello. And I said, you will do anything to avoid being a speaker. So... <laughs> The next day we're starting the tour and I'm on Fox 5 News in Vegas in the morning and then we're driving to Salt Lake City and then I'm gonna do a presentation in Salt Lake City that night. And uh, Olga and her husband Joe live in Canada and I get a text from Joe and he says, uh, Jace, the most amazing thing happened last night. Olga came to Christ last night. And then he texts and says, I have peace knowing no matter what, I'm gonna see her again someday. And I'm like, well that sounds a little different but I'm so glad she came to Christ. And then. About five minutes later, he texts me and he says, she's in God's hands now. So the day before when Olga called me and she told me she was going to have open heart surgery, I'd, I'd hired a film crew to film the whole thing. We were going to do a reality show. And I remember I got so mad. And I got mad for two reasons. One was I could lose someone I dearly love and care about. But the bigger thing for me is that Olga had a mission for the world and she had a message for the world. And if she died, she'd never get that message out there. And when I did that victory tour, we weren't doing it out of money we had. I was trusting that God would provide the money as we want. I was trusting we'd make sales, have people invest in us, that we would make. I, I secretly had this fear the RV would run out of gas in the middle of nowhere and we'd be begging for money. And it cost a lot to fill up an RV. People at Costco used to get mad when I'd go to the Costco gas station. Anyway, so, um, so now I'm driving and Joe texts me, she's in God's hands now. So... And I start crying. And my team says, do you want to pull over? And the only thing I can say is, I don't know. And the reason I can only say, I don't know, is because I know when I speak, someone's life changes. I know when I let God use me, something great can happen in that room. And there was someone in Salt Lake who needed to hear a message I was going to deliver that night. But on the other hand, I'm crying my eyes out, so it seemed like the safe thing to do. So finally, I pulled over, my team drove, we went to Salt Lake, we made a big difference. The reason I'm sharing this with you guys is you don't know how long you have. And if you're in this room, there's probably something calling you to something great. And if you're in this room, uh, I speak in a lot of stages, you guys, that aren't Christian stages, so I'm not always allowed to share the faith. In this room, we have a mission, don't we? And you don't know how long you have. So there is a kind of silver lining to the story. I get a text from Joe a few hours later, and he says, please pray for the last hour of Olga's surgery. And I said... You said she's in God's hands. What are you talking about? And he doesn't text me back till the next day. And he texts me and he goes, oh, the surgery went great. Olga's fine. <laughs> I, said, I text back. I said, you said she's in God's hands now. And he goes, oh, I meant it's in God's hands now. I said, you're going to be in God's hands now. So <laughs> the good news is she got a second chance, and my message for you guys is don't wait for open heart surgery for you to step up for who you want to be. How's that sound to you guys? So let me ask you a quick question. Who wants to put, if you want to do this, put them up, say yes. Who wants to make a difference? Raise your hand, say yes. yes. 
How about this? Who wants to save souls? Say yes. yes. Who wants to grow the kingdom? Say yes. yes. And who would like to increase your income? Say yes. yes. Nice participation. Thank you. Because if this is too much work for you, your life is going to stink. So do me a favor. Turn to someone near you and high five them and say, thanks for participating. <laughs> the world needs more Christians who participate. So real quick, before I go on, I typically teach business owners how to make sales, in or, and, and what I'm moving into is Christian business owners, how to make sales to grow their business. So I'm going to talk about sales. When I say sales, I request that you hear souls. You guys got that? So when I say sales, you hear what? Souls. Ooh, nice participation. Thank you. So I'm going to share with you how I went from making $2,000 in six months. Does anyone think that's a lot of money? 2006 months to doing 96,000 in sales in an hour and a half using speaking tools you can use as well. The fastest way to grow your business, how to have more confidence, how to increase your sales, how to make an impact in the world, and how to take ground for the kingdom. How'd you guys like to learn that? That's what today is about and how to do your part to fulfill the Great Commission. This is the secrets of profitable presentations. Now, I have a lot to teach you, so I could go slow and leave it out, or can I go a little bit quicker and get a lot in? Who says slow? Who says quicker? Awesome. We're going to go quick. So what is a profitable presentation? It's a massive amount of sales. It is new stages. It's becoming who you want to be. Anybody in here feel like you were made for something special? Anybody here feel like you were maybe made, don't raise your hand on this one, but you can kind of go like this. Anybody here ever feel like you were made for more, more than you're doing right now? And like you're ready for God to, as scary as it may be, you're ready for God to start using you? It's your time. Maybe tonight's it. Access to a whole new realm of achievers, and it's about helping people and making the world better. In short, here's a profitable presentation. It is about making a difference and making a lot of money. So what's not a profitable presentation? It hurts your sales. The word spreads, and you lose opportunities. You don't get invited back. It costs you more than you make, and you make no impact in the world. So basically, when you have a chance to speak, you're either going to make an impact and help people, or you're not. Does that make sense to you guys? Cool. So, uh, real quick, this is my why. Before I tell you anything else, I want you to know why I do what I do. This is it. I believe that you have a God-given mission. I believe, some, I believe there's something written on your heart that you want to bring to the world, and I think it can be fill, filled and funded through your business. And I believe for many of you, if you're a business owner, your business is your mission field. From the people you buy things from, from your employees, from the people you touch, your business is your mission field. And that through growing your business, you take ground for the kingdom. Also, I believe that speaking is the number one fastest way to grow your business, and speaking changes the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever really has changed the world, and speaking also changes you. So in short, it's access to fulfilling the Great Commission, and are you taking a picture back there? Hold on. Okay. So I believe when you speak, you become someone new, you become the person you wanted to be, you make a bigger impact and you grow your profit. So that's what tonight's about. And first, I want to say thank you to a couple people. The first is you. Thank you for being here and putting in the hard work. It's late and you're here and you're learning. So do me a favor. Look at someone near you and say thank you. You guys are awesome. The other people I want to thank is the whole team at Gateway, especially Equip, Pastor Robert Morris, Steve Doolin, who is so awesome. And is Margo in here also? She has been such a help. Everybody, can I get a round of applause for all those guys? Thank you so much. Thanks for having me in. Margo's like hiding behind the thing back there. So, so uh, since we're going to spend some time together, is it okay if I share with you guys a little bit about myself? So uh, I just went to Iceland on a like, bucket list to see the Northern Lights. Unfortunately, we didn't see them, but I had an awesome trip. If you yelp me, I've got a bunch of reviews. I teach seminars all over the place and workshops. Um, have you guys heard of Good Morning America? Well, I wasn't on that show. But I was on a show called The Daily Buzz, which is like Good Morning America for Generation X. I've been in movies. I read a, wrote a bunch of books. Um, I just have one of my most recent books come out two years ago. I'm not an agent. Uh, one of the arenas where I train people how to do better presentations is for real estate agents. So uh, we just released that. And can you guys see the, our sales numbers? Can you see that? Do you want me to, let, me, let me make it bigger for you. Is that better? <laughs> we, no, I'm just kidding. We were blessed. We hit number one in two categories. And not funny? Funny? So um, I, I bought my dream car. Anybody have a dream car they want to buy? So uh, this is a magical car because I'm, I'm about five, eight and a half. Now you laugh. I love that the women laugh at that one. Thank you so much. Um, when I drive that thing, I'm six, two and good looking. Now, actually, here's why I show you this. I, I did all the things the world say will make you happy. I, I did help a lot of people through my business. I was teaching personal development seminars. I helped save marriages. I had people tell me they would have committed suicide if they weren't there. I helped people become millionaires. I traveled the world. Um, by the way, who likes to travel? Anybody else? 
So on the, uh, the, on the top left, that's Banff Reams, Canada. What's the place in Australia where you can scuba dive? Um, the Great Barrier Reef. Thank you. That's the top middle one. The bottom right one, my dad was a spider pilot in Vietnam, and he was shot down. And he called me, and he said, we found the guy that shot me down. Do you want to go meet him? What do you think I said? Is that a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity? How often do once-in-a-lifetime opportunities come by? I encourage you to take notes. Write this down. Once when you miss them. When you don't take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, they're gone forever. But what, ta- what happens when you say yes to the once-in-a-lifetime opportunities? You get more. So write this down. When you capitalize, you get more. So we went over there. We met the guy that shot my dad down, and we kicked his butt. No, I'm just kidding. We, uh, <laughs> we actually, it was like a reunion. It was very sweet to see them talk. I think it was healing for my dad. Um, but, by the way, I got my uh, bank balance when I was over there. Now, the exchange rate's like a million to one, but in Vietnam, I had one billion Vietnamese dollars. So it was great, but here's the truth about all this, you guys. It was all empty. I could make a ton of money, and three days later, I was alone and lonely and depressed. And I wasn't saved at the time, and I was working for all the things that are shiny. And then the recession. Anybody else get hit by the recession or just me? And the recession hit too. And... Really, um, I lost everything, and I thank God I did, because Jesus isn't your everything until he's your only thing, right? And that's when, it, when I start really getting put back together, and there was only thing that one thing was worth it, because I was very demotivated for a while. I was like, what's worth working for? If I help someone become a millionaire, who cares? If I save a marriage, who knows in a thousand years? But then I read a book written for teenagers, I think maybe that's my level, um, about Ecclesiastes, and I realized there's only one thing that's worth giving our life to. And what's that? The kingdom. That's what's worth it. And so my whole life and my whole business became about the kingdom. So out of that, I formed a thing called the Profit Factory. Um, It's been years in the making, and it's finally coming to fruition. It's sales, marketing, and mindset for the Christian business owner. And the idea is we help you take ground, things go forward. Coming out with our first book soon called Faith It Till You Make It. And it's stories about how Jesus has pulled Christian business owners through tough times and gives them a strategic advantage in business. It's stories about how we can take ground as Christian business owners. So it's all about the kingdom for me. Have you guys ever heard the thing that if you drop a pebble in a pond, a ripple goes out and the ripple represents the difference you make? Give me some nods. Have you guys ever, ever heard of this? Is it warm in here or is it just me? It's just me? Okay. I'm moving. The lights are hot up here. So um, I was praying. and I was like, God, what's next for me? And I knew how to grow my business from speaking. And the vision I had, I saw all these hands dropping pebbles in this lake and together we were creating these massive waves of change in the world. And so what God laid on me is to teach other people how to use public speaking to grow their business. And so that's why I'm here tonight. I want to help you, whether we were talking earlier, she teaches Bible study, whatever your capacity is that you speak, I want to help you become more effective. Right before I got here, I talked to my friend Phil, who goes into prisons every Monday night and helps teach to the inmates and gets people converted. I've worked with him and more people get converted. So it's all about you fulfilling your mission. Cool or cool? Cool. Uh, By the way, I showed you this Hummer. I put a new bumper sticker on it after I was saved. It says, don't let the car fool you. My treasure's in heaven. (laughs) And then you know how God gives you things that you need later? So uh, when the recession hit, I had to sell that thing to pay my bills. (laughs) So thank God for that. So it's all about helping you guys fulfill your mission. That's why I'm here today. So since I've relaunched and helping business owners grow their business, been on media a bunch of times. I spoke at Harvard recently. I met the most interesting man in the world. And yes, I did get a product shot with him. Um, Speaking of product, I have a bunch of books and CDs I wrote on sales and speaking. And I'm blessed. I have a great life. And because I know how to use public presentations, I can make a lot of sales fast and have time off for other things that are important. So I get to give back. This is a mission trip in Nicaragua. Here's when I went to Africa. And I get to be blessed and used by God to make a difference. And here's where I really make a difference is through my events. I get to train and speak into people's lives. And not all of them are Christians. And in fact, a really great thing happened at my most recent event A woman named Sarah, who's not a Christian, came up to me after the event, and she said, I feel closer to Christianity than I ever have. And that's what it's about. Who wants to make ground for the kingdom? Let me see. Yeah, awesome. So let's jump into content. I'm going to go fast. I believe, uh, by the way, have you heard something to say by Matthew West? So the lyrics, wake up, 7.32 a.m., can't believe it's time to do it over again. Yesterday, it took all you had, and you're wondering if you'll ever get it back. But the whole wide world is waiting for waiting for you to step out that door. Come on, let your life be heard today. You've got something to say. I believe you have something to say. Look at someone near you and say, you got something to say. 
So let's get it out there. Here's the challenges. Most presenters are not entertaining. Audience are skeptical. People are inauthentic on stage. People find it hard to speak, who will find it hard to spread the word. The opportunity is now. Speaking is so important. Everyone you know in the Bible who made a big difference did it through speaking. Peter, John, Paul, Mark, they traveled and spoke. Jesus spoke. Speaking is what changes the world. And then we'll talk about money. I like to go on mission trips. Anybody else? It's a lot easier to fund mission trips when you're making more money. And it's a lot easier to give to other people's mission trips when you're making more money. So the more money you make, the more ground we can take. That's what it comes down to. Very few speakers are good. And here's the big thing. If you're in this room and you have like a passion or a message, if you could become a profitable speaker, as in really good speaker, there's a huge demand for you. TV, radio, podcast, there's a giant demand for what you've got. So profitable presentations. Now, some people get hung up on the word profit because in the Bible it says, for what will it profit a man if he gains the world yet loses his soul? Well, here's the definition of profit. It's yielding profit or financial gain or beneficial or useful. So when I talk about profitable presentations, can we look at them as beneficial and useful to the kingdom? Does that work for you guys? That's what I'm talking about. So profitable, if I say sales because I have a sales background, here's what I mean. Moving someone to action or decision. Write this down, please. Sales equals moving people to action or decision. It does not mean you get money from them. Sales means you could be selling a product or service, but it could also be inspiring donations. What sales can also be is inspiring someone to live a different way. Sales can also be saving souls. Because giving yourself to Christ, I mean, we know God does everything ultimately. And maybe you have a conversation that moves someone along that path to be saved. Who gets them to church, who gets them to a message they need to hear. Which, by the way, is another presentation. So the formula for a profitable presentation, please write this down. It's great script, plus great delivery, plus great you. If you leave critical components out of your script, you could kill your, it's, it's not on the notes, just write it down on the back or something. If you don't have the right script, and I'm going to give you a great script in a moment, you could leave parts out and kill your presentation. Delivery means you have to be entertaining. You have to touch their heart, and a great you is your mindset. Great speakers never wing it. Wing it gets wing it results. Your speaker training determines your speaker results. So congratulations on being here. This starts your training right now. So let's talk about scripting. Um, I told you guys I came out, I did 96,000 in sales my first time selling something, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing. It was just lucky. Anybody ever speak like that? And like you knock it out of the park and then you're like, I don't know why it worked. So my income was like this. And where I would speak a lot of times, if I sold something, the promoter of the event would get a piece of my sales. And so one day I spoke and I bombed, I made nothing. And the promoter had his assistant take me to dinner. And I'm like, well, maybe they're going to give me a pep talk. And so the promoter's assistant takes me to dinner, and he looks at me and he says, Jace, we'd like to invite you not to come back. <laughs> I thought, that's a horrible pep talk. <laughs> <laughs> it really stung, and I got tired of this with my income. So I finally said, all right, what am I doing when I bomb, and what am I doing when I rock so that I consistently can rock it? Does that make sense? So I put together a system. I put together a what? I put together a what? Thank you. A system for speaking. And what the system did is I created a template. And every time I followed this template, things rock. So a couple years after that, I met a guy named Mike. And Mike was considering putting me on his big stage in February. But he says, let's see how you do with a small group in November. But you can't sell anything. You're not allowed to sell anything. I said, all right. I didn't realize he was giving me a tryout. So I followed my system. I followed my what? And I spoke at his event, and I knocked it out of the park. And at the end of my presentation, he comes over and he goes, let's sell your stuff. And I go, I, th I thought we weren't supposed to sell. And he goes, you did great. We'll give him a discount. You'll get testimonials. Let's sell your stuff. I'm like, awesome. I did more sales that day than like 25% of my income the previous year from one day speaking. Is that cool or is that cool? And then he pulls me aside and he goes, I'd like to invite you. I'm like, I thought I did good. And he goes, I'd like to invite you to come back and speak to my group four times a year, and I'll pay you monthly to do it, and you can sell your stuff every time. How's that? So here's what to know. There's me speaking on his big event. By the way, his name was Mike Crow. He is a coach of business owners, and he lives right here in Dallas. Everybody, this is Mike right here. Mike, please say hi. Everybody say hi, Mike. There's Mike right there. So that was a few years ago, and we still have this great business relationship. So I'm not special 
the system is special. Does that make sense? If you follow a system for speaking, you will have great results every time. So what I did is I created a two video set and I created a template. Typically I sell this for 700 bucks. It comes with what you see there. Alicia, I met her at a speaking gig. She, had, she was gonna speak at like a chamber of commerce the next day. She's like, I don't know what to do. I gave her my system. She rewrote her presentation. She says, I use your template, rewrote my approach, total confidence. I had people handing me business cards asking to work with me coming off stage. Is that cool or is that cool? So because we're here at Equip, Margot is like, if you sell anything, I will kill you. So on behalf of myself and Equip, my speaking template that I normally sell for a lot of money is yours absolutely free on behalf of Equip. So we want to equip you guys. Thank you. If you want it, you'll see there's a sheet right there in front of you with my picture on it. Just put your name, phone number, email on there. And when I get home, I'll have my staff will email the whole thing out to you. Yes, sir. A plaid shirt? I had, you, you know the show The Nanny? Do you guys remember that show? I met the woman who was her designer and she like put together this outfit. I have, like, I have a blue t-shirt on. I, like who picks a blue t-shirt? The woman who dresses the nanny, I don't know. Uh, Macy's on sale, so. <laughs> I've never had that question before, thank you sir. We'll go shopping. So yeah, that's, if you want it, just uh, fill that out. You can get a free copy of it. We'll send that out to you. So let's move on. Let's talk about your script. Ken used my script. He did 32,000 in sales with 11 people in the room. He sells book publishing. So there's stages of a presentation. Now, I want to make sure you guys get this. It's really deep. You guys ready? In a presentation, there's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Okay. <laughs> just fair warning. The jokes get no funnier. So you, you can laugh at these or nothing. Okay, for real, we call it the intro, the body, and the call to action. Now, the intro, we call intro because you're introducing yourself. Your audience has four questions when you hit the stage. Here's the four questions in your audience's mind. One, do I like this speaker and do they like me? Second question, does this presentation matter to me? What's really contrary um, is that you, you would think if they showed up to hear you that they're sold on listening to you, but they're not. They're debating if they should stay there or go out with their friends or get into Facebook or pull their phone out. So you've got to answer that question. What qualifies you to be there as a speaker is their third question. Then the fourth one, does the speaker care about me? So when you hit the stage, there's four things we need to do. Establish rapport, gain interest, establish that you are an authority in your field, and then train the audience. Now talking about interest, one of the things that I think falls flat in a lot of presentations is people don't establish upfront why this will be a win for the audience. And if your audience doesn't know there's a win, they will tune out and you'll lose them for the rest of the presentation. By the way, I see you taking notes. This is what Greg from Houston told me. He saw me speak and he said that 10 minutes into my presentation, he leaned over to his business manager and said, I don't know what he's selling, whatever it is we're buying. It's because I nailed the introduction. So you gotta have a great introduction or your whole presentation falls flat. So here's some ways you guys can build rapport. Have a phone call with an event manager or the influential people ahead of time. And what you wanna ask is, what are your challenges, what are your desires, and what are the hot topics in the market? So I've talked to a few of you guys before I came on, what did I ask you? What are your challenges? Because I wanna know what your challenges are because if I can help you beat your challenges, I will be of more service to you. And then you want to walk the room, actually shake people's hands and have a smile. Everybody let me see your smile. Nice, thank you. Some of you look a lot nicer when you smile. Very nice. So an introduction video is another great way. You have a great laugh. Could you be at every presentation, please? And if you ran around, it'd sound like everyone's laughing. So an introduction video. So how can you build interest in your presentation? Well, you got to get a yes right away. One of the things you want to do as soon as you hit the stage is get the audience to say yes. To get the audience to say what? Because when they say yes, even if they don't mean it, they'll be like, well, yes. And then their brain will hear them say yes, and they'll go, well, I must be interested. And then if everybody else is saying yes, they'll go, well, this must be interesting. So using the group dynamics, when you get people to raise their hand and say yes, it will get them to listen long enough to establish the next thing, which is the hook. So say yes questions. They're quick questions to which everyone will say yes. Do you want, do you want, do you want? What were the questions I asked you guys? Do you want to make a difference for the kingdom? Do you guys get that? Do you want to leave your mission? Ideally, in this room, everyone's going to say yes to this. In a business setting, I might say things like, do you want to make more money? Do you want more clients? Do you want more free time? You guys got that? Cool. Next is, how can you set a hook? What's the first hook I used? Anybody know? Remember? How I went from making 2,006 months to 96,000 in 90 minutes. So a hook is something impressive that you've done or the outcome the audience can get from working with you. When you hook them... Anybody here fish? 
Mike, you fish. Everybody, this is Mike. He, he is, um, I know, from Gateway NRH. So when you, when you go fishing, does the fish just jump in the boat? Nope. What happens when the fish bites on the hook? Do you just immediately reel them in? You got to kind of pull, right? Does the, if you just throw a, a hook out with nothing on it, no bait, how many fish bite? And then, okay, so you got to put good bait on there. Does this make sense? When you're speaking, you ever heard like meet them where they are? You've got to put really good bait out there. You've got to find what's important to them and see how you can link your presentation to what they want. And then, Mike, when they first nibbles, what do you do? What's the first thing you do when they nibble? Can you say it louder so everyone hears it? Did you guys hear that? You've got to set the hook. So a hook is an amazing outcome they can get because they worked with you. And so it could look like, do you want to learn how to make more money? Do you want to learn how to save your marriage? Do you want to learn how to lose weight? Do you want to learn how to finally be peaceful? Do you want to learn to go on a mission trip? Does this make sense? Can you give me some nods? Thank you for that nod. I appreciate that. So imagine your business growing by X. Something they can get. And next, authority. One is to be an expert. The number one fastest way to be an expert today is to be a best-selling author, you guys. There's a ton of people who can get you published. You can do a 30-page ebook up to a full self-published book. It just, if you have a book, you are an expert. It's just kind of the way psychology works. So if you want to speak and you want to go big, start thinking about how you can write a book and put that out there. The other thing you can do is have an introduction video because who has introduction videos, beginners or advanced speakers? Now, what if it's your first time ever speaking but you have an introduction video? What's the audience going to think? Yeah. Now, I want to be clear too. Ma'am, what's your name? Miss? If, yes. Laura. Now, I don't mean when Laura's leading Bible study, she should like go, hey, everybody, check out my introduction video. I'm Laura! Right? But she could. No, I'm just kidding. I mean more when you're going to go on like a business presentation or like speak at a conference, have an introduction video. And then be about a cause. When you tie your speaking to something bigger than you, it expands your accessibility and more people will put you on stage. One of my clients, she's leveling the playing field and getting more women to the CEO's table. So that opens a lot of doors for her because it's about a cause. Next thing is, so we got report, interest, authority, train the audience. Now the body. The body, you probably know. Body's information that's easy for you. A mistake most people make in speaking is they spend most of their time writing the body of the presentation. When do you think you'll be most nervous in a presentation? Beginning. The beginning. So you need to spend the most time on the introduction, and then if you're doing a close, the call to action. There's where you need to spend your time. The body's easy. You know the body. But here's what you want to do. Deliver great information. By the way, on the template, I'm on page two now. So page one of the template, and if you notice, the template is three pages. Page one is the introduction. Page two is the body. And then page three is your call to action. And I understand not everybody in here is going to be making a sale, and the concepts are the same. So you want to tell stories. You want to tell the importance of what you're teaching, give implementation tools and techniques, and then lead to the sale. And then the call to action philosophy. Um, by show of hands, who is a business owner in here? Could I see real quick? Can you put them up high? Awesome. And who's not a business owner in here? And who's not voting? Yeah. So if you're a business owner, you'll use the call to action to either lead harvest where you collect names or you'll actually make an offer of some sort to set up an appointment with you or you'll actually sell a product or service. Now here's the philosophy on a call to action. And this could be if you're leading a church service or if you're going to a prison like my friend does. Are people trained? If, no, I mean he goes into prison and he, tr he saves souls in the prison. <laughs> wow, that really came out wrong. Thank you for catching that. So... Um, have people been trained in life by life to just say yes, or have people been burned? Burn. Have people ever been taken advantage of? Yeah. So because of the way society is set up, people have been trained to say no. But if you're in this room, and you're someone in business, and you care about people, if you're going to offer them something, don't you hope it improves their life? Yeah. So the philosophy is we've got to help people to get moving, and we've got to do everything we can to get them moving. So here's some of the things you can use to get people moving. This will be on page three now in the call to action. What you want to do in the call to action is tell a victory story. If you're talking about weight loss, if you're talking about being saved, if you're talking about relationship advice, you want to tell a story about someone who has had great success through using your information. In other words, you want to let people know, if you say yes to what I'm offering, your life will get better. Next is tell specifics to your offer, the benefits of your offer. Benefits far outweigh features. And please write down benefits and circle it and star it and underline it. Benefits are basically how someone's life gets better. Can you keep the camera on me over here? What if I go this fast? 
<laughs> nice work. So, and then you want to get testimonials, especially if you have testimonials live in the audience, and then value stack. Basically, the value stack is really simple. It means whatever amount they give you, they get back way more. The way I was taught to put together a value if I was making a sale from stage is you put everything you can into the offer until you go, oh, that's too much. I can't give that much at this price. And then you put it in so that when you make your offer emotionally, you know that your audience is getting an amazing deal. Does this land for you guys? So that's what you want to do. Give as much as you can possibly so that you're getting... The, the hardest yes to get in business is which yes? The first yes. Then they know you trust, you love you. It's so much easier to get more. It's that first yes that's difficult, so you've got to give as much as you can. So now let's talk about content in your presentation. Write this down, please. Give your best stuff. A lot of people think, oh, well, if I give my best stuff, there's nothing to buy later. No. Serve people and help people because if they get results with your content, if they get results, it'd be kind of like a pastor going, listen, here's the deal. It's really great being Christian, but I'm not even going to mention it until you're saved. How's that going to fly? Instead, when they see it in us and when they hear what's available to them through our testimony, then they go, oh my gosh, I can get so much. Is this landing for you guys? Cool. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I love that feedback. And then fast action bonuses. So if you're actually literally selling from stage, you'll give a discount. Why? Because people have been trained to say no, so we have to give them reasons to say yes. And then a fast action bonus is like something you're just going to offer once right now, one time, only if they say yes at that moment. Here's the theory on it. Um, I'll speak around the world, and I maybe have an hour with people to get them to spend 1000 2000 bucks, whatever it is. I have one shot. And if I don't get a yes in an hour, I'll never see that person again. And I relate to my speaking not as selling something. I relate to it as access to changing their life. And if I don't begin the relationship then, it never happens. So for you, speaking is an access to changing lives. Maybe you are leading a Bible study and someone's there that first time just to check out this Jesus thing and you're boring, they'll think all of Christianity is boring. I have a friend, Stephen, one of my best friends from college, and it breaks my heart. He will not come to church because when he was a kid, he used to have to go to church and it was boring and he hated it and he thinks all churches are the same. You guys, are all churches the same? No. Well, we need to be as good as we can to get the opportunity to have people come back and come back and come back. Cool. So let's talk about delivery now. Stage of delivery. The number of great content items you give people, you want to write this formula down. The number of great content, like you actually provide value, multiplied by the number of laughs you get, mul which in this room, I don't know how I'm doing, multiplied by the number of emotional impact moments, the moments you touch the heart, equals the number of yeses and souls saved. So the number of great content items multiplied by the number of laughs, multiplied by emotional impact items, equals soul saves. So when you see Pastor Morris talk, is he funny? Write this down, every seven. Ideally, you get the audience to laugh at least once every seven minutes. Minimum every seven minutes. And then I recommend if you can get people kind of misty and teared up at least once or twice a presentation, you're moving them. So let's talk about delivery. Check your emotions. Have you heard of the book EQ? So basically, here's what they found in this book. Emotions are contagious. If you have one person talking and one person listening, the receiver of information will subconsciously mirror and match the facial expressions of the speaker. So the reason they hypothesize we do this is the receiver gets to jump into the emotional state of the speaker to understand the depth of the communication. You guys with me on this so far? So here's what we're saying is emotions are contagious. So here's what I like to say. Angry pastors make angry Christians. Now, on the other hand, we know this. The fruit of the Spirit, peace, joy, love, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So if you're in the fruits of the Spirit, what will the audience automatically get? The fruits of the Spirit. So my request and my invitation for you is to practice being love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you are that, the audience will feel it. And if you're a business owner, they'll feel that and they'll attach that feeling to your offer. They might not know why they're buying from you, but they'll just be like, it's just something feels right. Is this, you guys, have you ever been in a situation it just doesn't feel right? We want to be the situation that feels right. So people buy stories, not stuff. They buy the stories you tell and the stories they hope to tell because they bought your stuff. So let's talk more about stories. You can't reach people if you're boring. There's too many other options. And people are watching dramas and comedies a lot more than they are documentaries. 
So don't raise your hand on this one. Anybody in here and here ever just given the facts? Facts, 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 facts in your presentation? You got it. How did Jesus teach? Stories. stories, parables. So if he's using stories, why aren't we using more stories? And use comedy, stories, touch the heart to make your point, overcome objections, change lives. We say funny makes money because people, when they're funny, they're emoting. And all buying decisions are based on emotion and then backed up with logic. So when you're laughing, they're emoting and they will buy more. Also, when you, they cry, they're by. When you touch their heart, you move them emotionally. When you move them emotionally, you move them physically. When you move them physically, you move the pocketbook. And when you move the pocketbook, you'll change a life. Uh, the reason I say that, and I'm tying a pocketbook to a life, is in a lot of situations, I'm not talking about directly asking for someone to give their life to Christ. I just know this. I have friends who talked about going on mission trips, and I have friends who paid for mission trips. Guess which one showed up on the mission trip? The ones who paid for it. So a lot of life, you can tell someone's commitment level by the money they'll put on it. So if you can inspire people to put money on it, it's a lot easier to get them to follow through, especially if you're a business owner. You guys got it? Cool. So great delivery. You've got to bring your voice, clothing, comedy, body movement, shifting states together, plus anchoring. Have, who here, by a show of hands, has heard of the concept of anchoring? anchoring? A few of you, like anchoring a stage. So I want to teach you a couple things around anchoring. One is, have you ever heard about anchoring a spot on stage? So I want you guys to think about this. Have you ever had someone in your life like a coach or a mentor who made a difference for you? Um, when you think about Paul, how many times did he speak and how many people got saved and how brave and courageous was he? Have you ever had someone else in your life who made a difference, they said what you needed to hear, right when you needed to hear it, even if it stung a little bit? Do you appreciate that kind of, appreciate that kind of person? So what I want to share with you guys today, do you see what I just did? Hello? Who saw it? By show of hands, who saw it? Here's the way the subconscious works. When I'm pointing to this spot, like just picture this blue tape. If I'm pointing to that blue tape and I say, imagine a coach, imagine someone who's touched your life, and I'm pointing to that spot like this. You guys with me so far? Then when I step into that space, all those positive thoughts and emotions will anchor to me. You better know how to do this stuff because if you don't know how to do this stuff, here's what could happen. Imagine there's a conference and the first speaker comes out and the first speaker talks about how they were watching a funeral, and they were graveside, and they were watching the casket be lowered in the ground, and there was a message they heard, and it was this really somber moment. And they said goodbye to the person in the casket. You guys with me so far? Now imagine the second speaker gets on stage and didn't watch the first speaker, and the second speaker goes, I want to tell you guys about this amazing thing my wife and I did. So I took my wife out on a picnic, and I put out the blanket. What's, what's wrong? They're having a picnic on the grave, aren't they? <laughs> it was two separate speakers. But that portion, by the way, don't anyone step there the rest of the day. So, um, but that part of the stage was now anchored to the previous speaker's story. So if you're going to be at a multi-speaker event, you should watch the other speakers. And just know how to anchor. Because if you talk about something negative and you're at a certain part of the stage, if you go back to that part of the stage, it could wreck your presentation. By the way, talking about timeline, there's timeline. Imagine that this is, when, how do we read? Right to left or left to right? Left to right. And how are before and after pictures? They are... Left to right. So one of the things you can do when you're speaking is talk about where you were a long time ago when you're on the left side of the stage and then talk about progress you made until you got to be here today, center stage, and then talk about the future you're stepping into when you go to this end of the stage. So if I want to tell you a story and I go, you know, I remember a time and I don't even have to tell you when, I could just walk over here. Where am I now? Somewhere in the past. And if I talk about, then I had this breakthrough and now here's what's happening. Here's how my life is going. Where am I now? In the future. And I don't have to say a word. Is that cool or is that cool? But if you're talking about the future and you're standing over there, the audience is going to be like, I, I don't get it. They won't know why they're confused, but they're confused. So you've got to learn how to anchor that stage correctly. Are you guys getting value out of this? Yeah. Let's show ahead. So Margot knows I'm delivering. Who's getting value out of this? Let me see. Oh, thank you so much. You know what? You guys look good. Do me a favor. Look at the person on your right and say, you look good today. Now, now look at that one on the other side and say, well, at least you made it. <laughs> oh, now you guys are laughing. It's the mean humor. I see. Now I want to talk about the most important part of your presentation, you. A great you is the difference. A great you depends on a great mindset. Your mindset is really a heart set. So 
If I could speak all the languages of earth and angels, but I didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. In other words, please write this down. Write down the words, I must love my audience. I believe that great speaking, without saying a word, is saying to your audience, I love you, and giving them the chance to hurt you. It's being authentic, and it's being vulnerable, and it's letting them in. I think the only way you can ever change lives as a speaker is when you show your heart. Because if you hide your heart, they'll feel it and they'll hide their heart. So you got to love. Everybody say love. love. That's, what, that's the only thing that ever will change the world. That's what Jesus brought. And we got to be it. we got to be salt and light. So the most important part of the presentation, you. What's in you can stop you from having your greatness, can stop you from growing your business, can stop you from making a difference, can stop you from taking ground, or can catapult you forward. So this is, uh, have you guys ever heard of TED Talks? Big deal for business, like could that help your business a little or a lot? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so this is Rhonda. So Rhonda, I worked with Rhonda, she's one of my clients. I do like a live three-day event, and Rhonda came to my event, and she was terrified of speaking. She has this breakthrough, and she actually gets excited about speaking. Have you guys ever like experienced your life, like you have a breakthrough, and then you get a reward somehow? So Rhonda gets this email on day three of the event. She goes, Jace, I got invited to apply for a TED Talk. Should I do it? I'm like, yeah, you should do it. So she applies, and she gets accepted to audition. So we work with her on her delivery. She nails her delivery. She does a TED Talk. Her first presentation since junior high was a TED Talk. What could that do for your business and life, right? Landed her first paid speaking gig after that, and she does book covers. Have you guys ever heard of Chicken Soup for the Soul? She did one of their book covers, and so now she gets to get higher paid book cover gigs because she's a speaker. So that was Rhonda speaking at TEDx. So disclaimer, because I, I think a lot of I was speaking once at one of Mike's events, and the guy before me was like a fighter pilot, and like he was like, like, built, like I'm straight, and, and the guy was like gorgeous, you know? Like I felt like he should just get on stage and go, like the dude was perfect. I'm like, that's the guy my dad always wanted as a son, you know? And I was like... <laughs> Man, how do I compete with that? So here's my disclaimer for you guys. I grew up average and insecure. Like I knew I was made for more, but I just never had the belief in myself. And don't raise your hands on this one again, but you can give me like, you know, that if you're feeling it. I knew there was more out there, and I had to do the work in here to get out there. So... Here's one shift I made. If you want to write these down. If you're not where you want to be, instead of being self-focused, serve. It's time to serve. Here's the prayer I say every time I speak. Which times I speak? Every. Thank you. Every time. I say, especially in a sales environment, I say, God, may their life be better forever because I was here, whether they work with me or not. And it's so counterintuitive. And if I take my eyes off of, oh, I got to sell, and I just serve, 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 typically I'll make more sales. And your audience feels it. So you guys, God made my life be, made their life be better forever because I was here, whether they work with me or not. So if you make your speaking about making their life better, in fact, if you're in business, the less you talk about your business and the more you give them information that will change their life, the more your business will grow. It's so counterintuitive and it is so true. So a great you, if you have fear, then focus on faith and focus up. You got to put your eyes on God. You got to trust that God's going to pull you through. Now you got to do your part to prep, prepare, to speak, to work on your heart, to rehearse, and put your faith in God. A great you, if you have fits and starts, if you're not sure where you're going in the presentation, then you got to flow. Here's how you flow. You practice till you can't get it wrong. Most people practice till they get it right, but that's not how pros do it. Imagine you're going to perform in a play on Broadway, and hundreds of people are coming, paying hundreds of dollars a ticket. Would you just want to wing it? Would you want to rehearse once? Or would you want to rehearse till you had it? Then why are you treating your other speaking as any less important? Your business, your mission, your Bible study, or whatever it is, is just as important. So you've got to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. You guys, it's work. I mean, there's no other way about it. People say, oh, as a speaker, you shouldn't say work. Whatever, it's work. You're either going to do the work to be great, or you're not. Who's willing to put in a little work? Say yes. Yeah, awesome. By the way, if saying yes is too much work, your life's going to stink. So great you. If you're flat, you got to catch fire. Start talking about what lights you up and let it rip. One of the things I say before I go on is, man, I'm just going to let it rip. I'll say, I'm just going to mess it up. I take the pressure off of myself. If you try and be, do you guys want to know the number one way to kill a presentation? Be inauthentic. The number two way is try to be perfect. 
You ever seen people that are like this on stage? They're just saying every word perfectly and they have just, nobody cares. I don't care if you say ums and ahs. I, I really, I just care you're authentic because the audience will buy that. The audience will love that. Capiche? And if you don't know what that means, it's Italian for capiche. So <laughs> be the audience you want. Please write this one down. Slow to buy is slow to sell, especially if you are in business. Now, the contrary is true. Fast to buy is fast to sell. I'm in a mastermind with uh, some high achievers and internet marketers. They are all very fast to say yes. Talking about being the audience you want, no ovations from you equal no ovations for you. If you're stingy with your appreciation, you will have people in your audience who are stingy with their appreciation. So if you want to have great audiences, practice being a great audience. Anybody here in sales, like direct sales, you can tell what excuses you're making in life by what excuses you get. Because you'll attract people who feel the same. So you got to quit making any excuses. The great you, stretch yourself, train, trust God. And it's your time. So I got some, who would like some giveaways? Say yes. yes. Awesome. So I got some awesome giveaways. The Profit Factory podcast is launching soon. I'm interviewing people with their stories. So on your paper, there's, a che- there's three checkboxes. So the first checkbox says, what's the first checkbox say? Yes, please send me. So if you want the template and videos, check that checkbox. The next one says, keep me informed when you launch the Profit Factory podcast. Check that, and when we launch, we'll send you an email. I probably won't call you, but I'll send you an email. And then bringing it together live, what's the three parts? Great what? Script, great delivery, and great you. I'm going to tell you, I, I got an amazing offer for you guys. Before I tell you about that offer, here's, here's uh, Eilat Schwell. She's a doula in Israel. She was struggling with presentations. We worked together. She did a presentation, made 4000 bucks in like an hour, and she's teaching women something that's going to change her lives. What could be better? Who likes to make a difference and make a lot of money? And what can you do with that money? You know, uh, like we were talking about in a lot of Christian circles, like money and sales is very taboo. Someone's got to pay. I mean, ultimately it comes from God, Right? But if God blessed you with the capacity to make money to bless others, then let's go do it. And then, especially in light of what's happening in America, the more money you make, the more we can cause the right things to happen in society. The more people who go to Christian movies, the more Christian movies that get made. So that's what it's about, you guys. This is Blazing Grisano. He says he's built better relationships with the audience. He's asked to come speak again and again. His monthly income went from 36000 to 63000 He went from 18 to 60 presentations. It's about being a better you from inside out and getting to know and like yourself a whole lot more. So this is Susan Crow, and Susan is uh, probably one of my favorite clients ever, terrified to speak, and Susan came to my event, and she went back after my event, and she spoke in front of 300 people on relationships and changed lives. Someone came up to her and said, you saved my marriage because you were there. And now Susan has a passion for quilting. Are there any other quilters in the room? Anybody? Well, she has a passion for quilting, and they make these quilts, and then she goes on mission trips, and they give them to people in uh, the orphanages and in the hospital and poor people, and they just show God's love through these what's called kingdom quilters. So Susan's here, and actually, Susan spoke through in relationships, and through working and learning profitable presentations, she doubled her donations. Susan's right here. Can you stand up real quick, Susan? Say hi. So here's one of the things I want you guys to do. Please write this down. Give your business to God. Whatever it is, I want you to give it to God. So I was doing an event, and I had a guy named Josh there. And one of the things we figured is is we look at, what's your metaphor for business? And Josh's metaphor was he wanted to be the well. And what that meant is, literally, he wanted to make enough money to go over to Africa and dig wells that were right next to churches. So he could be a soft introduction to God. People didn't have to go to the church, but they could just get the water and be served. And I think that's the first step. Just form relationships, make a difference in people's lives. You guys, I see some nods. Are you guys getting that? So his metaphor is the well. Well, he kept messing up this one thing. And I said, Josh, how often are you going to keep messing this up? And he goes, all right, here's what I'll do. Every time I mess up between now and the end of the day, I'll pay 500 bucks. I mean, I'll pay $100 every time I mess up. He messed up five times, 500 bucks. He said he would give it to the waitress. We were in uh, Sedona, Arizona. Everything closes at like 7, and it's 8 o'clock when we go out. There's no waitresses anywhere. So we can only find like a bartender. And so his wife and I are trying to get the bartender to say she's a waitress. And I learned something about ego. We're trying to give her 500 bucks. And she goes, I'm a waitress. And then she goes, no, I'm a bartender. Waitress is below me. And I learned something else about sales. 
Erica and I were trying to manipulate her into saying she's a waitress instead of just straight up going, will you please say you're a waitress so we could give you a bunch of money? So this went on for like an hour. And by the way, the lesson was just be straight with people. So Josh finally goes, just, you're, here's the money. And he gives her the 500 bucks. And he goes, I'm so sorry that my wife and Jace gave you such a hard time. He goes, Jace, how much money do you have? And I go, 250 bucks. He goes, give me your money. And he gives her the 250 and he goes, now remember, his metaphor, he wants to be the well. He wants to be a soft introduction to God, no strings attached. He goes with this. He commits to being the well. So now he gives her 750 bucks. He says, it's none of my business, but I'm just curious, what are you going use the money for? And she says, I probably was going to go, but I'd have to put on a, plane, uh, on a credit card. I'm going to buy a plane ticket to my mom's funeral. She's going to buy a plane ticket to her mom's funeral. And we said, can we pray with you? So we prayed with her and we left, no strings attached, didn't ask for anything. The rest of her life, she'll remember the week of her mom's funeral, two Christian dudes came in, paid for her flight, and were gone. Josh and I sat in the car and he looked at me and he said, did that just happen? And I said, and then we both burst out crying. <laughs> like, what did Josh fulfill in that moment? He became the well. A soft introduction to God. And then I really believe God rewards us on stuff. So the next day, we went for this hike, and there's this huge mountain of rocks, and Josh uh, climbs up to the top. And I looked at his wife. I said, Erica, isn't Josh afraid of heights? And she goes, he was afraid of heights. He, like, lost his fear of heights overnight. Where do you think that came from? And here's the trippiest part. Within 60 days after that, he got a job selling high-end roofing, making over a quarter million where he has to go up and down 60-foot ladders. If he had never made the commitment to giving his business to God, I don't think that would ever happen. So who would like a resource to help you launch into your commitment? Say yes. yes. Here's what I got. And because of Margo Kingdom Builders, I have a great thing. It's being together live. I have a three-day experience in Las Vegas. A training like this is valued at 3500 bucks. I have one coming up. And you can attend absolutely free, no strings attached. Here's why I'm doing this and giving this away. Chad came, um, his company they increased their income by 12%. They increased their revenue by 36,000 monthly, annual increase of 48 presentations. Now, I know not everybody has a big business like that. This guy's an internet marketer I've worked with. He's radically increased his business. He's doing double digit sales online, which if you're in that arena is huge. And this is Andy Tolbert. She teaches real estate agents how to stay safe. So Andy used to sell her training for like a couple hundred bucks and she wasn't getting many gigs. She learned how to use what we're teaching. She sold it for $6,600 and now she's as busy as she wants to be. Cool or cool? So here's what I have for you guys. Why am I giving you a free ticket? Three reasons. One, my heart is to serve the body of Christ. If I help you get more effective, we take more ground together and we fulfill the Great Commission. Two, my life changed when I went to a seminar in Vegas. I want to pass it on. Now, I know some of you are like, Vegas, what? I was actually saved in Vegas. Believe it or not, there's a lot of great Christians in Vegas. And I'll tell you about some amazing churches while we're there. Um, tickets like this are normally $3,500, $7,000 for you guys. It's free, and this is the third reason why. I'm filming, an, uh, I'm filming it. I'm making product. I have a chance to speak in Europe next year, and I want to be able to make available filming of my training because they're probably not going to fly from Europe to Vegas. So you guys can get two tickets absolutely free. Just know if you come, you'll be on film, so please be a great audience. That's what the other reason I'm giving it away free. So you get this absolutely free, no strings attached. So if you want to come to Profitable Presentations Live, the third checkbox, just check it. My team will call you. This doesn't obligate you to anything. It just says, hey, I'm interested. And then my team, Aaron or Alexis, it's a husband-wife team, they'll call you up and say, hey, here's the dates. Do you want to go? And all that good information. It's, it's October 18th through 20, so it's just about three weeks away. Cool or cool? So last thing, this is something to say. So listen up, I got a question here. Would anybody miss you if you disappeared? Where well, your life is the song you sing and the whole wide world is listening. If you're living, if you're breathing, then you got something to say. And you know, if your heart is beating, then you got something to say. No one can say it like you do. God is love, and love speaks through you. You've got it. You got it. You got something to say. You guys be on an honor. Thank you for having me here. I'm Jay Souter. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.